Hallelujah. You cannot serve God and not serve man. Very true. A lot of us want to serve God and we go around exclaiming or claiming that we're serving God. We, we, we say a lot of things, but the truth of the matter is you can't serve God if you will not serve man. Because the truth is that most of the service that we do that will make sense will be service that we do to man. So the greatest height of service to God is to be able to impact other lives with our own lives. So if you want to truly, truly serve God, then you need to understand. You need to understand that you will serve people. Praise the Lord. And when we serve people, I remember that we talked about the fact that it's not man that repays us. Because the Bible is very clear that when we serve, we should serve like we're serving God. Because he's the rewarder. He's the one that doesn't forget. Man has the proclivity to either forget or be incapable of helping or rewarding. But God never forgets and he ne he's never uh, incapable of rewarding us. So every time we step out in service, let's recognize first and foremost that we're not serving. That it's God that will reward us even when we serve man. Praise the Lord. Who, was, who else was here? Thanks, Ungozi, for sharing the um, sharing the the video god bless you who else was here last week and what did you uh, the last class and what did you learn be, be, be sensitive to God's yes be sensitive you know don't wait for the plague to be the reason you wake up be sensitive to his warning today we will see that you know the children of egypt could have avoided pharaoh and his people could have avoided even the first plague because if you go to Exodus chapter 4, when God sent Moses, he actually announced this last plague first. He said in verse 22 and 23, he said, Say to Pharaoh that he, Israel is my firstborn. Therefore, he should let my firstborn go. Otherwise, I will take his firstborn too. So it wasn't, you know, God never hides what can happen. God doesn't gain anything by catching us on our words. He's always the God who speaks it ahead of time. Whether we listen enough to want to make the adjustment is a different conversation altogether. But the truth of the matter is none of us, the things that get to happen to us as children of God, whether positively or negatively, are not surprises. Praise the Lord. We were surprised because we were either not listening or we're not paying attention. If you are listening and paying attention, you will realize that God always speaks before he does anything. Praise the Lord. So when we see that people are, that a plague is hit, or when we, as, when we begin to hear things about things that are going to happen, the Bible says a wise man hear it and consider it. Consider. Take the time to pay attention. When Jesus Hi, Karen. Thanks for joining the class. When Jesus um, was brought to the temple and um, um, both Simeon and Anna spoke so many things to his mother, the Bible says she pondered on those things. It is the responsibility of a child of God to ponder on the things that he or she hears. Praise the Lord. Where you don't understand, make the effort and ask the Holy Spirit to explain to you. We are not, we are children of God. We have the spirit of God. We are not meant or we are not supposed to, um, what's the word, fly blindly. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hi, to, to be, God bless you. Thanks for joining the class. Who, who else was here? Mm. One way or the other, he does speak to us. He does speak to us. He said it in his own. He said, will I do something without telling my prophets? God doesn't gain anything by keeping us in the dark. Praise the Lord. That we are not understanding does not mean that he didn't speak. And God speaks. You know how God speaks. He speaks to you individually. He speaks via his word. He speaks via through other people. Sometimes he speaks through our doctors. He speaks. God speaks. That we're not listening or paying attention to what he's saying. Or that we're not able by, to decode properly what he has said to us. Does not mean that he hasn't spoken. Praise the Lord. So God does speak to us. Any other person was here at the last class and wants to share something? Anybody else? Hallelujah. 
And what God was saying, and yes. I went to church. Praise the Lord. So God speaks. God speaks. I know he speaks. Yes, sometimes he speaks not so that we can change it. He knows that sometimes it's not in our power to change the journey. You get it? Because I personally know that um, for over two months before, in fact, I feel that like the third month after I had, I just I had been in mourning. My spirit had been in mourning and I just didn't even know what. Do you get what it is? So there's sometimes, and I know that some of my siblings actually dreamt that my father passed on. Do you get it? But And we prayed. We actually did pray. But apparently it wasn't for us to change. Do you understand it? But at least it prepared, it was meant to prepare us to an extent. I don't know that I was ever prepared because I didn't believe that it could happen. But it got to happen. And I know that because of that, I know that God speaks. It's not the first time that that kind of thing will happen to me. And I, in the end, I will realize that, oh, my spirit has actually been in mourning. God does speak to us. But whether we are listening, whether we are understanding, whether it is in our power to change is a different thing. But concerning the plague and what we are studying in Exodus, it was in their power to change. The circumstance. Do you get it? Because this was going to be recompense or consequence for actions. And God gave them a way out. The way out was simple. Let my people go. So God does speak to us. Praise the Lord. Anybody else remember anything? Yes. There are always a progress. Is that what I said? What I know is the of God are usually in A progression, yes. Yes, it's because that's the word I was looking for, a progression, a progression. Praise the Lord. Okay, so let's go on to chapter 11 of Exodus. And if you look at Exodus chapter 11, it's a very short chapter. It's a very ch- short chapter. And as I did my... Hi, hi, for me, hi, Mike Davis. Good morning. Thanks for joining the class. As I looked at Exodus chapter 11 this morning, one of the things that occurred to me was that we could have not had an Exodus 11 in the Bible and we'll be fine. What that meant was Exodus 11 was a continuation of the conversation that Moses had with Pharaoh. Praise the Lord. If you remember that last class, I did say that Moses, you know, Pharaoh said to Moses that Moses should get out of his sight and never come back. And Moses did say, yes, I will not come back. Praise the Lord. As I researched today, when I read it, I was like, oh. Did Moses go back to Pharaoh's presence? But as I re- as I researched, I realized that he didn't go back. It was right then, after the night plague, after Pharaoh had cast him out, that he actually told Pharaoh um, this thing that he said to him in chapter 11. Praise the Lord. Because immediately that God realized that Moses would not be going back before Pharaoh anymore, God said to Moses, and the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards, he will let you go hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. Praise the Lord. You know, so 11 chapter 1 was, according to um, um, Bible theologians, happened right after that altercation that Moses had with Pharaoh. Praise the Lord. So he was saying to Pharaoh, I'm actually going and you will not be seeing me again. And this is the reason you will not be seeing me again. Because God is going to bring the plague of the firstborn upon you. Praise the Lord. And when you are ready, when you let us go, you will let us go in a hurry. Praise the Lord. Now, remember that since when we started, we've been looking at this this whole saga, Egyptians and Moses and God's saga from a number of angles. We've looked at it from the angle of what is my 
responsibility as a child of God when God starts to speak. We've looked at it from the perspective of the Egyptian. If I ever found, or the Israelites in Egypt, if I ever found myself in Egypt, what should I be doing? Praise the Lord. And we've also looked at it from, just from, okay, I'm born again, but really, if push comes to shove, I'm not 100% born again. What is it that I can do to make sure that my relationship with God is an enhanced and deep relationship enough that I will not have to suffer judgment? We've looked at it from all of those angles. I remember that when we looked at chapter 9, we had to look at it side by side what is happening in the world right now. And we drew our lessons from it. So then we want to look at the fact that, you know, a lot of people say that the fact that Jesus, sorry, that God, that the firstborn children of the Egyptians died, that it meant that God was wicked. Praise the Lord. And we've had that conversation back and forth before I've, I've been asked, you know, how many times in this class someone will say, you know, why did God send the plague? Do you understand it? You know, we've asked, I've been asked that question like practically every class since we started. So I know someone again is going to ask, couldn't just God, God just have had mercy? The Bible says that our God is a God who is merciful. But the Bible also says that our God is a God of justice. God is fair, yes, but he's a God of justice. And that's why even as children of God, we get to go through things that unbelievers go through because God is a just and a fair God. If it says, for instance, the soul that sinned shall die, it doesn't matter whether you got born again and then you... When there's, I don't understand. I don't know whether you understand what I'm trying to say. There is a consequence for our actions if we're not in Christ. Praise the Lord. And even when we're in Christ, there are certain actions we go, we undertake that we still get to suffer this consequence even if we go to heaven. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So this is a classic example of the judiciousness of God. God is not, is not afraid to take responsibility for actions that he had announced up front. Pharaoh was told in chapter 4 of Exodus, let my Israel is my firstborn. Let him go. Otherwise, what will happen? I will take your firstborn son. Now, after God said that, God did not go ahead and kill the firstborn immediately. He allowed the first plague, the second plague, the third plague. And we kept seeing the progression, remember? Yet Pharaoh kept hardening his heart. Till we got to, I think, about the sixth plague, God himself now said, okay, I will utilize this hardness of heart that Pharaoh has. Praise the Lord. Do you get it? Do you understand it? So we cannot sit here and begin to try. I, I'm not going to try and hold forth for God. Why God, you know by himself because the, this scripture is very clear when you go to chapter 12 you see that it was God that sent his angel to slaughter the firstborn sons of the Egyptians it was not sickness do you understand it God wasn't hiding under the guise of anything when this particular plague hit he came full throttle so that everyone will know that he is a sovereign God praise the Lord now, as I studied and I looked at it, I said to myself, this is how the sovereignty of God comes to play even in our lives. God is sovereign. In the end, the Yorubans call him KBOC, the unquestionable God, the God that cannot be questioned. Do you get it? It doesn't matter whether it's convenient for you or not. God is not going to change. That's the sovereignty of God. That is the one trait that our God has that nobody else has. No other God has it. The fact that our God is what? Is what? Sovereign. Our God is a sovereign God. It doesn't matter whether I like it. It doesn't matter whether I don't like it. His sovereignty cannot be questioned. Praise the Lord. Now when we take another step back, to ask, why would God take the firstborn sons? Do you know how many sons were slaughtered in Egypt by a pharaoh over the course of so many years? Because he was doing what we call population control. That was what he was doing. 
He didn't want the children of Israel to overwhelm the Egyptians in numbers. So what did he do? He tried to kill the sons. And every time you kill sons, what are you doing? You're stopping procreation. Now, if only we want to look at it from the fact that God, whatever a man sows, he would reap. If you sow the wind, you will reap the wild wind. Why should the Egyptians not lose their sons? Do you understand what I'm saying? This isn't only... <coughs> Excuse me. Please check whether I have water. This isn't only about the fact that the children of Egypt or the children of Israel had to be let go. This is beyond that. This is a... This is also about the fact that they had spilled blood over time. And that blood was crying out. Praise the Lord. Amen. Do we understand it? Do I have a drink? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, let's go on. So, he says to uh, Moses, he says, Yet I will bring one more plague upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards, he will go hence, and when he will let you go hence, when he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. Praise the Lord. Then, verse 2 he says, Speak now in the ears of the people, and let every man borrow of his neighbor, and every woman of her neighbor, jewels of silver and jewels of gold. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of the people. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, the stage is set for you to know that this was the final one. When God is ready, he's ready. We normally know. He didn't say, you know all the other ones, he would say, go and tell Pharaoh, and then he walked to walk away. But this time, he said, go and tell Pharaoh that he will let my people go now, because I'm going to take his first sponsor. And because of that, he's going to let you people go off in a hurry. Then he turns to the children of to Moses, and he says to Moses, go and tell the children of Israel. If you notice, all the other plagues, Moses never went to speak to the children of Israel. But this one he said to them because he was preparing for what we know today as the feast of the Passover. He was preparing us for what we know today as communion. Do you understand it? So when we sit there again and we say that the Old Testament is not relevant to us today, where did all the things that we see in the New Testament emanate from? Praise the Lord. And Moses thought, said thus to the Lord, about midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that seated upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the maid servant that is behind the meal, and all the firstborn of the beasts, praise the Lord. And there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and the Israel. Praise the Lord. Can you see that? God ha is laying the ground. He said, I will, I am going to do something. He said, from the greatest man in the land of Egypt to the smallest person or the least person by estimation I am going to take their firstborn son but he said he said concerning the children of Israel he said a dog will not even back at them and they will lose nothing praise the Lord can I interest you in the scripture that says a thousand shall fall by your left hand and ten thousand by your right hand and it shall not come near you. With your eyes shall you see the reward of the wicked. Remember that it is the reward. A reward connotes the fact that someone had done something. Praise the Lord. When people say to me, what is my confidence 
for the things that I do. In scriptures like this, I have example in the Bible recognizing that if I continue to stay in, according to chapter 9, when we talked about staying within cover, I recognize that if I continue to stay in, things will happen because that is what happens with life. Things happen. But they shall not what? They shall not come near me. Praise the Lord. That should be confidence for every one of us today. Take a look at your word again. Hi, Stella. Hi, John. Thanks for joining the class. Take a good look at your word again. See the things that are happening and ask yourself, am I inside? Because if I'm inside, then I'll be fine. The only time you will not be fine is the time that you are outside. Because if you are outside, then things will happen that nobody will be able to account for. But my prayer is that we will stay in in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Do we understand what it is that I'm saying today? Do we understand it? And there was a great cry throughout, and there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt. Such as there was none like it, none that shall, shall, shall be like it anymore. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. God's mark is upon us. Praise the Lord. So therefore, yes, the rain will fall on the just and the unjust. But the rain, the floods, will never overwhelm the just along with the unjust. Amen. It will never. Amen. And when we're talking righteousness, let's quickly remember that it's not about what you did. Let's remember that this righteousness is about the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The one that Jesus died and paid to give to us. Praise the Lord. Then on, when you go on, you see, and all these thy servants shall come down unto me and bow down themselves unto me, saying, Get thee out, and all the people that, with, that follow thee, and after that I will go out. And he went out from Pharaoh in a great anger. Do you see why I said that chapter 10, 29, and chapter 11 was a continuation? Do you see it? He left in anger. This was still, this was still a continuation of that same one event. Praise the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh, can you see now? Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. Praise the Lord. And Moses and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh. And the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he, could, he would not let the children of Israel go out of his land. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Like I said when we started, chapter 11 is very short and is the announcement of the plague, the biggest or the greatest of all the plagues. And like I said, we will not go, to ch go into chapter 12 today. For a number of reasons, I wanted to take the time to, to do my research and study my chapter 12 properly. Because chapter 12 is loaded. Praise the Lord. And two, because I also just came back from a very intense week. So I'm trying to take things light this week. Praise the Lord. But I have a number of things that I want to say about Exodus 11. The first one I have said already is that when you read your Exodus chapter 4, verse 22 to 23... If you read your Exodus chapter 1 verse 22, you will find out that God had ordained and he had announced the plague of the firstborn even before we got to Exodus chapter 11. Praise the Lord. So the Egyptians cannot say they were caught unaware. Praise the Lord. That's one. The second thing that I wanted to point out is that, and I have said it already, is that chapter 11 is a continuation of chapter 
10. Praise the Lord. The conversation was continuing when Pharaoh hardened his heart and God released all kinds of things upon them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But unlike other plagues, this one would not touch the Israelites until one whole chapter later. Praise the Lord. This was a plague that was announced, yet God was not going to enforce it. What that also meant again is that God was giving the Egyptians what? The opportunity for repentance. Praise the Lord. That was one reason why the plague did not hit immediately. Now, when you take a look at your life, how many things have you heard about? How many things has the Lord warned us about that he did not allow to come upon us immediately because he was giving us the opportunity of a chance to repent? Praise the Lord. How can we go from plague 1, plague 2, plague 3, plague 4, plague 5, plague 6, 7, 8, 9? None of them, if you remember, was easy. And yet, a man would not change. It's easy again, like I always say, to talk about Pharaoh. But take a look at our own lives. How many warnings had we received that we've not botched? Why? Because they've told us time and time and time again that our God is a God of mercy. And yes, he is. But chapter 11 of Exodus is preparing us to see the judgment of God. The kind of judgment that I'm praying that we will never see. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Pharaoh had all the time in the world to repent. Yet he didn't. We've talked about the sovereignty of God as shown by the events that will begin to unfold after this chapter. But we also see that even when God wants to bless a man, he prepares the man. Praise the Lord. See how he prepared the Israelites. He said, go and ask. Every man ask his Egyptian friend for gold and for silver. Because I'm giving, I'm giving you favor in their sight. No, sometimes when things, when we have gone through life and life has beat us up, we always think that all is lost. This was back payment that God was preparing for a labor of 430 years. It's only God that can compute it and pay you. That's why when we started and we're talking about service, I said when you serve, when you serve God through man, allow God to pay you back. Praise the Lord. How will the Egyptians actually carry their gold and give to the Israelites if God has not turned their minds that they couldn't think properly anymore? I want to use it to encourage some of us who have served God for so long. And it looks like we're just serving in vain. It looks like we're just pouring water in a basket. Can I encourage you to see that God pays his own? The Bible says he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. God is able to pay you and me for our services in his kingdom. Praise the Lord. And it is only God that knows the things that we need the most when it comes to reward. A man will pay us a salary and we will be excited. A man will give us perishable things. But God's gifts have a way of enduring. Praise the Lord. Is this making sense? Is this making sense? So, Again, if you just woke up and they showed you chapter 12 or chapter 13, how the children of Israel were living and their neighbors gave them gold and silver, you would think it's a sudden miracle. Can I announce again to you that every miracle has a process? That the miracle we are seeing that is cooking in chapter 11 for the children of Israel, they started to work for that miracle 430 years ago. Praise the Lord. And even when the miracle became ripe 
for them to be able to take delivery. God still had them do something. Chapter 12 is full of all the instructions that the children of Israel were given if they will be able to. Because the, God said quite all right. He said, a dog will not bark against my children who are in Egypt as these firstborn sons begin to die. But when we get to chapter 12 next week, do you know what I will see? I will see that God made them slaughter firstborn lambs. Do you get it? He made them slaughter animals in place of what? Their firstborn sons. He made them put the blood on their doorposts so that when the angel of death came, he would know that these ones have been redeemed by the blood. All of this is also a foreshadow of what Jesus Christ, as the firstborn of God, we do for you and me today. Praise the Lord. I don't know what next week is going to bring because I'm actually just rounding off today's class. I don't know what it's going to bring, but I know it's going to hold some major nuggets for us. Praise the Lord. As I looked through that scripture today, I was like, whoa. So if I were you, I would even go and study chapter 12 by myself so that we can have a really interesting class or two or three next interesting classes. Praise the Lord. You will see that God doesn't waste his resources. You will see that God is a planner. Even when he wants to do a miracle, he plans it out. You will see that the capacity to receive a miracle is dependent on your capacity to be able to obey. You will see that when God begins to cook a miracle, God takes everyone into consideration. You will see that there is so much that even for the Egyptians, even though their cup was full to overflow, God was still giving them an opportunity to repent. So many things will show up in chapter 12. But if there is anything that I want you to go away with in chapter 11 today, it's for you to see the mercy, absolute mercy of God. Praise the Lord. When I say you need to see the absolute mercy of God, why would they announce it and walk away? Because the children of Israel could still, sorry, the children of Egypt could still have Repented, praise the Lord. As a matter of fact, according to research, some of them followed the Egypt, the Israelites out of Egypt, praise the Lord. Because at this point, the Bible said that in chapter 11, that Moses was held in high esteem in the sight of Pharaoh's servants and their men, praise the Lord. So it figures that another reason why the children of Israel would have been able to take gold and silver from the Egyptians would have been that it has been proven to them that their gods were useless and they were already following the God of Israel. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. So I need you to go away from here recognizing that God is sovereign, that you like, don't like what he's doing does not mean that he's not God. Praise the Lord and he will stop doing it. Praise the Lord. It doesn't have to be convenient for you for God to be God. Praise the Lord. But even in the sovereignty of God, he allows for ways of escape. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's a very short, short chapter. If I continue to try to stretch it and stretch it, I'll probably begin to lie. Praise the Lord. And I don't want to lie. Praise the Lord. But I'm willing to hear your walking ways. Hi, Oba. Thanks for joining the class. Hi, Shay. Thank you for joining the class. So if you have questions, I'd like to hear them. If you have contributions, I'd like to hear them. Otherwise, you can share your walk away. Praise God. Questions. Walk aways. Contributions. Hi friends, um, today's chapter is a really short, short chapter, so we've come to the end of today's chapter. But please plan to be 
if you're in Lagos and you can physically make the class next week plan to be there and if you're not in Lagos make sure that you're not lacking in data for your phone because I promise you next week is going to be great hi Uche thanks for joining the class you are not here today because you are not sure I was back I am back praise the Lord so please um, make sure you join us next week if you're online please share your walkaways or if you have a question I'll be delighted to answer your question God bless you I'm still very tired right I'm trying to keep my eyes open. Bless you. Questions. <laughs>